Hey, it's Doodle Bud. Quick update. If you remember, about a month ago, I was sent this uh, X tool. This is the D1 Pro to check out. So I've been having some fun with this, playing around with it just recently. Cut a little toy plane here for my son. He thought that was a blast watching this thing do it. So what's going on there, little buddy? The laser's making the airplane? Okay. What do you think? Is that pretty cool? Yeah. Are you excited to put it together? Yeah. You want to do it together, build it? Yeah. I can do it right now. Right now? Mm -hmm. We're going to have some lunch first. Okay. After the we're done doing lunch, can we build it? Absolutely. So we're going to put that together uh, tomorrow or something like that. That'll be fun. But I've got to think of what... What else can I do with this laser? Not stuff that other people have done, but things that people haven't done. So I got a piece of brass in the chuck there. I got some things going to be doing, but I keep coming back to titanium. I love titanium fountain pens. So this is my Enso Pocket Titanium. I also have down here on the bench um, the Enso Italia in titanium. So how I did this anodized finish, it started out the first time I just did the basic 9-volt battery electrolysis style anodizing, looked cool. Then I did it with a torch, cool, and then I did it with a torch and you dunk it in ferric chloride acid to get this finish, cool. Uh, went a step further, this has a titanium nib, and did that to the nib so it matches, cool. And then, um, you know, change the finish, so this was more of like a satiny kind of finish. Uh, when I did the anodizing, this was a high polish. I want the see sort of the difference. That's cool. But somehow I need to get this laser to do cool stuff with titanium. And I got some cool ideas. So I ordered uh, a chunk of titanium sheet here off of AliExpress. This is pretty cheap. I'll leave a link in the description. And the thing, so what's going on with the laser and titanium, when you hit titanium, either you can do electrically or with heat, it, you get an oxide layer. And how much heat, there's a range you got to work within, um, but how much heat that it gets determines the thickness of the oxide layer. And that thickness of the oxide layer changes the color that you get. Okay, so it's like a phase shift going on with the reflected light. So pretty cool. So this is essentially a heat source, a very controllable heat source. Now it's not the ideal one to work on metals. You need a different wavelength of laser. And uh, yeah, anyone watching, like the same folks, you next tool, you sent me the uh, this thing. If there's someone else who's like, let's send Doodle Bud a laser. If you want to send me a galvometer fiber laser, I could do super cool stuff. Even subsurface laser engraving. Anyways, back. To I could buy, you know, this is what I got, and this thing's awesome. I gotta, I gotta maximize it. I want to do stuff no one's done. So I got some titanium and played around. I did a color gradient. I watched another YouTuber. It's like Dad Build Dad or something like that. Kind of a crazy guy, but he did a good job. And um, the gradient's all gone now. But I watched his video and I saw sort of the maximum. He did a really good job. Like he looks like he put a lot of effort in it. So I saw the maximum color gradient he was able to pull off. And it wasn't that great. It's better than nothing, but it it wasn't a it wasn't the full color spectrum and the nice richness that you get um, anodizing titanium either with a with a voltage method or with heat. And so I ordered a proper DC power supply so I can control it better. But I couldn't wait to that to get here. So I got out the blow torch to do a you know just a quick one and add some color. And then when I had some cool color, I thought, what could I do to the titanium then? So I've, I've just had this idea about bees. I don't know, just bees are cool. I think just visually it would look good on a pen if I did a pattern with some bee-related things, right? So I shot some bee stuff at the titanium. And what it does, to, you know, you can just do lines, trace things out, or you can uh, fill it in. So you're affecting the oxide layer. So you can see here, the oxide layer got removed. Here I just did some lines, but you can also see what's happening. Oh, the focus. You can see there, it ablates the oxide layer, but there's still some heat. So it gives like some little highlights. 
So I could do some cool stuff here. I busted out the tripod here so we're not wiggling. So what I'm thinking of doing is I'm going to anodize a pen. Okay, I'm going to play around with the patterns a little bit more and stuff like that and what type of uh, colors I can do. But I ordered a, a power supply so I can greatly, you know, accurately control the color of anodize of oxide layer thickness I get on here. So I can do gradients, I can do all sorts of things, uh, really cool color spectrums. So it's, it's up to 160 volt DC, so I should be able to get nice greens, which are tougher to get. So, yep, that's, you know, thanks for everyone for watching. I get a few bucks from ad revenue when I can buy a cool power supply to do this. So that's what I'm doing. So I can control the colors on here better than just with the flame. And then I can ablate some of it. So what I could actually do now afterwards, so the oxide layer is gone on here. So if I wanted to, I could re-anodize it, not with the heat because it'll screw everything up, but with the, elect with the power supply and put this at a different color. So that's what I'm thinking of doing. And I have a pen here. I got, uh, I'm probably going to order some titanium tubing as well. I haven't done the review on this yet because it's just a terrible pen. It was like a great idea. This is a titanium Safari knockoff, Lamy Safari knockoff. And I did a splash anodize because the pen, like the build quality, it's just, I haven't reviewed it because it was so bad. I'm like, I have to at least try to make it cool. So I started the videos and all that stuff. Uh, maybe I'll finish it and I'll go back to the footage I saved. But this is so bad. I thought, let's make it cool with a splash anodize. I was working on it, and I made a fatal flaw, and I screwed it up. So I would have, was going to restart and sand it. Um, but you can see it's hard to get that off. Like, look, you can still see the waviness on there. This one's easier to do because it's, it's fully round. So I can throw that. Sorry, I almost lost you. Into the chuck there. So this will be a perfect test specimen for the uh, cool titanium anodizing I want to do. So all these kind of cool swirls that I was able to do with the heat and the ferric chloride acid dunk, I can do whatever pattern I want. I can, I can anodize this. I'll, I'll get it to a certain color. You're going to have to work uh, voltage to the highest voltage and then work your way down. So let's say I get this up to that 110, 120 volt, whatever it is, get it nice and green. And then what I can do, whether it's a geometric pattern or some bees or whatever it is, I will etch that pattern in with the laser. So the laser isn't going to be doing the anodizing. It's going to be removing it. Okay. But then I get bare fresh material. And so because if this is at a higher voltage thickness, right, if I put this in at a lower voltage, say 30 volts, and it's going to turn it uh, blue, it doesn't uh, interfere with the green because the, the voltage didn't go high enough to take it to another thickness, another layer of oxide. So I can, I could do multiple layers. I could, you know, there's really no limit. I could have the full rainbow on this pen. And what I can do is just ablate different features of a pattern at different times, re-anodize and get that locked in, work from high voltage backwards down and have a cool multicolored titanium anodized job with the help here of the laser that even though it's not the laser that's designed to do this stuff, I'm going to make it do this stuff. So yeah, this is going to be pretty neat. I am most likely going to uh, maybe do one pen where I do a nice anodized job on it and then etch in, you know, a cool pattern by just removing some of that oxide layer because this worked out pretty good. Nice contrast. But this one, I just really want to push it because I really don't care about this pen. It's terrible. Maybe I'll make it so cool. <laughs> this terrible pen will be cool, but it's still so bad. No matter how cool I could make it look, it's executed terribly. So don't, if you see this pen in AliExpress, I mean, if you have one and love it, okay. I just don't know how that's possible. It's just so badly built. Anyways, um, I'm going to make this thing awesome. You just see a plain piece of shiny gray metal right now. I see like just different swirls and lines and patterns all with different colors. And people go, how the hell did you do that? So I'm going to show you. So next quick little update. Doodle bud, why you're so excited? That was terrible. Um, because wire, why did I get some wire? I was on the homie the pot and I saw the wire and I went, oh, that's interesting. Copper wire, copper wire. What could you do with copper wire and fountain pens? Well, 
quick little update on the 3D printing. It's coming along. I'm doing my whole Fusion 360 thing designing. I could hit the print button right now and print out a pen. But, uh, you know, doing the material testing and stuff, I'm just not super excited with how the threads are engaging, just wear and tear. If the pen rolls off, it, it'll, you know, most likely break. And it's already, you know, you can 3D print a fountain pen. It's been proven. It's been done. So why the wire? Well, one method of manufacturing, a really cool method. If you can do it, if you can design your part to incorporate this method, it's very cost efficient. And that's to make something out of wire. They have those like, you know, four or five axis, like we'll finger, you know, uh, CNC machines that feed out the wire or rotate the part, turn it in and out, different, you know, things come in. That's how springs and all sorts of things are made. There's all sorts of stuff. If you go to the Dollarama, the Dollar Store, Dollar General, Dollar Giant, whatever, wherever you are, there's a lot of those parts, baskets, and all these little things. If you look around, they're done with wire. There's no waste, right? There's these giant spools of wire, usually steel, whatever it is. And um, they just spit out the parts and they just get chopped off and there's no wastage. And you can just let those puppies run. You just feed it the wire. It's cheap material. So it's a very cost efficient way. Now, I don't have one of those machines, obviously, but I would like to make a pan out of wire. And if you could scale it, then uh, you could get to the CNC machines. So there's some tricks you got to do. Now, it could be people have already tried it. It didn't work and they're much smarter than me. And that idea should be abandoned. That's option one. I'll find out. Option two is people tried it. It just didn't work. But maybe there's a little step they missed. And maybe I can find it. So I figure for whatever this was, seven, eight dollars. And I got an idea on how to do this. It is worth the try. So I'm not abandoning the 3D printing, but I'm just not happy with that end result. But I can use the 3D printing to make this happen. So I can make, now they got the wire, I know the wire thickness. I can make a mandrel that I can, you know, so that I'm going to design the pen body, but it's going to have a thread that goes all the way around it to act as a mandrel for me to wrap this wire around so I can conform it to the shape I want. And then I'm going to have to do some stuff to those bodies after they're wound to make them solid and stable. I got some more technical things to sort out, but I'm super interested if I can make a pen out of wire because it would get all very solid. There's a way you would do it. And it, it'd be very solid, just like a regular metal pen. Dimensionally, I'm hoping I can make it stable. And then it'd just be something no one else has done. And if it works out, potentially, it's a very cheap way to move a product into CNC machining, right? There's no, you're not removing material when you do this. You have to remove all this material. And um, yeah, it's fairly costly to just have wire go bzzz, come out of machine really fast. It's so cheap and quick. So yeah, maybe I let the cat out of the bag here too early. Someone sees this idea who has capabilities. And they go, oh, boom, done. So there was, <laughs> kind of shot myself in the foot there, or maybe I'm going to do something really super cool that no one's done before. So that's how I'm going to uh, still keep the 3D printed pen going. It's going to help me create a non-3D printed pen by using a 3D printer. So uh, that's pretty cool. And Again, what sort of inspired it was the, the sponsorship of today's video, which is Skillshare. So you've probably seen me use the online learning platform Skillshare in order to take on courses to help me learn design, like with Fusion 360 and making cool things. There's even project ideas I found. I'll probably get this idea and put the Doodlebud logo on it. But perhaps you're more career focused and you're looking to take some classes so you can maybe make a bit of a shift or get into a new field. And so I leaned on Sophia Chang here, who's going to help me learn Instagram. Check out my Instagram. You'll see I know nothing about it. But she gave me some great ideas, things to consider, really focusing on how to maybe refine my brand and learn Instagram. So I'm excited to do this. I've already got some great ideas. If you're looking to make a bit of a career change or get some more skills in areas you're not familiar with, this is a great platform to do it. And they have a deal right now. The first thousand people to use the link I have down there in the description, you get your first month free of Skillshare Premium. 
So give it a look down in the description, but we'll leave it there for now and get back to the video. So sometimes when you put yourself in the position to have to, to do something, like if you show up to the gym, you're putting yourself in the position to potentially work out. So me jumping on and doing those classes to finally like get myself moving on this idea that I've had, get yourself in position to come up with other ideas and work on things and start that kind of creative process. So, you know, this is going to be a ton of fun. Anyways, I'm going to keep on working with that. Going to keep on working with that. We'll catch you next time.